I'm Steve for This Week With Cars, and last time when you saw this 1962 Austin Healey Sprite, I got the car running and driving, the engine runs, the brakes work, the clutch works, but today I'd like to take a look at making the car a little bit more drivable, going through things like lights, and fixing all the little things that'll make it a lot nicer to drive around. In one of the previous videos, when I turned the lights on, one of the headlights was not working. The left headlight is all fogged over, so I think it's a headlight and not a wiring issue. So I'm just going to replace both headlights so that they match. The headlights come out of these cars very easily. It's pretty much the same process on all British cars of this vintage. There's a screw down here. Just remove that screw with a flat screwdriver. So there's two clips up here that hold this ring on. So I like to push down a little bit and then pull out on the bottom. You can't pull on the top because it's held in up there and then lift it up a little and it should come out. To get the bulb out, there's three Phillips screws around here. Do not loosen the flat headed ones. Those are for adjusting the angle of the headlight. And then pull the bulb off of the connector and then reverse the process, putting it back together. The bulbs have these blocks right here, so you cannot put them in the incorrect direction. All of the other parts are all keyed as well, so that they will only go on one way. The tabs on this are not spaced the same, so it, they cannot go that way. This ring only goes on one way. On this ring, the rivet always goes at the top. However, there is a little tab right here, and that goes through this little hole right here and keeps this ring being clocked correctly as well. So make sure that you hold it above the two clips that are up here. Those clips are right here. Make sure you hold it back onto those, push down on the top, and then push the bottom in. And it should pop into place. And then replace the screw on the bottom. This holds the ring from popping off although they are held very well even without the screw. Now turn it on and test it. Now if you remember from my first video, the cable to release the bonnet is seized up. So I'm going to have to take this grill out to get to that to loosen the cable up on this end and then I can loosen it underneath the dash. To take the grill out, there's four flat-headed screws on the top, and then down on the bottom are two Phillips screws that need to be released to release the bottom of the grill. There are nuts on the bottom side of these bolts, so you'll have to stick your wrench in through the grill so that you can hold the nut while you unscrew these bolts. Just let the nut fall for now. You can retrieve it after the grill is off, and I'll show you how to put these back on when you're reinstalling the grill. With the grill moved, now we have access to get to the cable. Just have to undo this cable nut that holds the cable together and then unwind it from the release latch. After that's done, the cable can be pulled into the inner fender through this hole right here that goes in behind where the front wheel is. Once you have your cable pulled through this hole into the inner fender well, you have to remove this clip right here, which holds the cable inside here so that you can pull it through this grommet and back into the engine bay. This clip is held in by this nut right here. The bonnet release comes through this grommet right here. And there is also a clip in the engine bay right here. Once this clip has been removed, the entire cable can be pulled into the interior of the car. With the bonnet cable pulled completely into the footwell now, it's just one nut on the back there to remove the cable, and then reverse the whole process to install the new bonnet cable. Here's what the installation of the new cable looks like. Now I can refit the grill. I'm going to install the two outer bolts first. That way I can leave this spaced out a little bit and get my finger in underneath here in the grill. To get the nuts underneath here, I'm going to put a little bit of grease on my finger. I don't need that much. And I'll get that on the washer and on the nut. That way they stick to my finger more 
and I can stick my finger in there and then get the bolt started. And then I'll continue that process for the next three. Now to install the screws that go way down in here, I'm going to stick a strong magnet onto my screwdriver, which will magnetize it and allow me to hold the screw this way to get it started down in the hole there. Okay, I got it started. Now I can position the grill in the final placement of where I want it and tighten it down. Let's test it one more time. I was just cleaning out the car and discovered some very neat things. If you have a car that's extremely original like this car, it'll still have these factory marks. Now this is writing that was put on when the car was produced. This is saying that this body is a Sprite and has a black interior. There's a number right here on bug eyes. This would actually be part of the VIN number. I'm not sure what the number on this one signifies because this car on the back of the dashboard has all of its factory writing there as well, signifying how the dash should be laid out with mile per hour gauges. And it also lists the last four digits of the VIN number of this car, 4909, just as it does on the back of the dash on Mark I sprites. The next thing I want to look at is the charging system because I'm not going to get very far on just the charge of the battery. So let's start up the car. You can see the ignition light is on right now. I don't have the engine running, but if the generator is working, this light will go off. So you can see the light is still on. So that means the generator is not charging the battery at this point. So let's get under the bonnet and take a look at that. When a car has been sitting for as long as this one, it's not uncommon that the generator has become depolarized. The generator needs to be polarized in order to work because it needs to know if you have a positive ground or a negative ground car. Before you go around checking anything else, it's a good idea to polarize the generator and see if that's what the issue is. Here on the regulator box, you can see the first two terminals are A and the third terminal is F. So I want to just take my screwdriver and connect A and F together, and that will polarize the generator. So I'm just touching this little bar right here on A, and then if I push my screwdriver forward, it'll hit the terminal of F, producing the little spark and polarizing the generator. Do you see that little spark there? Do it a couple times for good measure. Okay, now the generator is polarized. I'll start the car again and see if it started producing power. You can see the ignition light is still on, so the problem was not that the generator needed polarized. We have a bigger issue with the charging system. So the next thing I want to do is check to see if the generator is any good and can make power on its own. So I'm going to pull off the wire off of the F terminal. So we're looking at our little code here. And I also want to take this wire off of the D terminal. And then I'm going to start the engine and touch them together. Now you only want to touch them together momentarily and watch for a spark. If there is a spark, we know that the generator is producing power. If there's not, then I need to take the generator off and rebuild it. Okay, now I'll touch the two wires together and we'll see if it sparks. It should be sparking like crazy right there, so the generator is not producing any power. Oh, there it goes. Okay, as you can see, we have our sparks. The generator is making power. Now that we saw the generator producing power, I'm going to polarize it one more time and just double check and see, and see if it is working now. So I'll go between the A terminal and the F terminal and short that out with my screwdriver. It produces a little bit of spark doing that. Still the ignition light is on, so we must have a problem with the regulator.
Now that we think the problem lies in the regulator, I'm going to pop the cap off of it. And I don't hear people talk about these a lot, but there's actually two sets of points inside the regulator, just as there's points in your ignition system. And these points corrode just like it does in your ignition system, and then your charging system will not work properly. So I'm gonna go grab my points file, but before you do any filing or sanding on these points, make sure that you disconnect the battery. Otherwise, sparks are going to be flying everywhere. So make sure you disconnect your ground before proceeding any further. This is my contacts file. This is the same one that I use for ignition points. There's one set of points right here that you can easily get your points file into. And then another set of points right here, which I'll have to back off this adjustment screw in order to get enough room to get my points file in there and get both sides of the points right here uh, cleaned up. I'm going to insert my file right here. Just put a little bit of pressure on that so that it cleans up both sides of the points. Trying to keep it straight so that I don't file it to an angle. Okay, that should be good. Now I'll grab a screwdriver so that I can loosen this adjustment and clean the points right here. Now I have enough room to get my file into these points here. It is naturally spring loaded, so if you push this down, let it up on your file, then you can just move it up and down, get that surface cleaned up. Now when screwing this adjuster back in, you need to make sure that the point gap is set correctly. And you actually want the point gap to be when this is held down. So you wanna hold that down and then put your feeler gauge in there. Make sure that your point gap is set correctly. You want it to be about 15 thousandths. So just give it a few adjustments until you think you have it right. Now let's start the car again and see if the regulator is working. Now that we have the regulator cleaned and adjusted, let's try it again. You can see the ignition light went off this time. So the generator is charging. Let's look up a voltmeter and double check. Okay, I have a voltmeter connected. You can see the battery right now is charging up. It's at about 12.7 volts, and if I speed the engine up, that should increase. As the amount of charging available increases as engine speed increases. So we should see the battery start to charge the more that we let it run. When a car's been sitting as long as this one has, it's a good idea to put a new radiator cap on. It's also a good idea to replace all of your radiator hoses. Now, I'm not sure if this radiator leaks. It has shows evidence here that it does leak, all this green stuff that you see around. So I'm going to dump water in the radiator and we'll see if it starts leaking because I don't want to replace the hoses yet until we know if the radiator is any good because if I have to pull it out anyways and we haven't found out, that the radiator was bad. We just did a bunch of work that we have to do again. In an unknown car, you always want to put water in it first. That way you're not wasting a whole bunch of antifreeze. Okay, I am starting to hear it leak from somewhere. There's water pouring out of the bottom of the car. It's leaking out of the bypass hose. This is next to the water pump. It looks like it's been replaced recently, but it also looks like it's split. So someone's been in there and replaced it, but they didn't do a very good job putting it in. I'm going to top the radiator off just to see if there's any other leaks that show up. Well, I filled the radiator up and I don't see any other leaks. That doesn't mean that this radiator isn't going to leak once it's heated up and at a pressure. But right now there is no water leaking out of it, so that's a good sign. Well, I think that's it for today for this 1962 Austin Healey Sprite. Next time I need to address the entire cooling system. And if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.